Hello there, and welcome to what's bubbling at Zimbul. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to look at what's new in Zimcat, the latest version of Zim, at zimjazz.com. So here we are, and we press on the cat, and we pop into what's new. We've done bubblings on all these guys, and the poly, and the asset, and the page, and the line, and here we are at the Zim Scrambler. Ooh, let's have a look. So this is fun, isn't it? It lets us scramble letters, so S, and then C, scr. Uh, it's, a, it's a spoiler. This is going to spell, can you guess? Oh, brother. Scrambler. Those were really scrambled. Yeah. And there it can sort. And by the way, it can do a uh, multiple sort as well. Let's try the picture puzzle, shall we? Hmm. This bottom can go down here. And this head can go up here. And the cat can go over here. And another cat part. And this thing can go up in the corner. Oh, darn. The bottom came down. Uh, what do we do? And then this goes over here. And that goes up there. And what happened to the head? How'd this get down here? This is also scrambled. Ah. Hey, 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 we did it. So it knows when it's finished and can handle a puzzle like that. Isn't that neat? So let's dig into some code and see what that looks like. Reduce that down. And here we are, Zimcat Scrambler example. We're bringing in Zimcat 00. And as we scroll down, we arrive at the picture. Uh, now, we're bringing in one picture of Pragma, that's who that was about, and what we're doing is we're going to cut it up into smaller bits. So we specified how many calls and rows, and by the way, do you want to see this? Let's just, just scramble it 30 and 30. Let's have a look. Open in browser. Oh my word, would you look at that? And here's a little lip. Now, where did the lip belong? Hmm, there's there's another lip, so we'll bring that up there and put it out. Look at that, we're building it. Oh, and there's a bit of the nose. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it works. Isn't that amazing? I think we've done it with 100. It's just in, like impossibly small, obviously, but it still uh, functions to be able to scramble this thing up. So cool. Anyway, you don't want to do 30 and 30, probably. Um, so that's the rows and columns. And what it's doing is it's taking the same image. So we didn't have to cut that image up ahead of time. It's taking the image and dividing it up into the, the width and height of, of those little tiles. And then what we're doing is we're looping through twice the rows and the columns and creating little thumbs. And we're pushing these into a, a bit or into an array of them. So we're making a new bitmap from that one image. We're using a width and a height, and then we're specifying where in the image to start that width and height. Now, it may be after doing this a few times and realizing, hey, this is, you know, this is a few steps here, maybe we could bring this into Zim as some sort of chopper. <laughs> you know, like a new chopper, and you pass in a, or something like that, right? But uh, for now, you can do it this way, and it's nice to see some some uh, raw code for for <laughs> for a while anyway zim sometimes does so much for you that hey do you miss looping you know you miss double looping you know you used to have to do that for a tile but now we got zim tile so it may have been a while since you've done a double loop Ooh. so anyway there we are preparing the pictures as an array and the tile will now accept as of zim cat the tile accepts an array um, and there you go. So that's the array of thumbs. As long as you have the true on. So true is new to Zimcat, and it stands for unique. So we bumped that right in there. What we've realized is over, over the years, we've had tile. Tile used to be to tile the same object, and we would just tile it a number of times. A bunch of circles, just tile it, and we would use that for art or what have you. Then we started using tile to tile interface. And we don't often want to copy the interface over and over. We actually want unique interface, but we still want to be able to tile it. So we turn to uh, the ZimV technique uh, where we could pass in a uh, ZimV value here of, say, a series. So we would pass in a series, and it would do that series in order. But if you wanted to um, apply events to those those um, 
those components that were tiling, you would lose you would end up losing the events because the tile automatically cloned things. So it would clone those and it wouldn't clone the events. And let, so you'd have to put the events on after. <laughs> and so putting up with this for a little while, it was always really easy to, to, to make errors or not know what was happening. So in ZimCat, we're trying to uh, iron out any difficulties that, that uh, people have had. And so we introduced a new parameter here called the unique parameter, and it comes right after the rows and columns. Uh, well, there's the number of rows and columns, sorry, the spacings. These are the spacings. Uh, by the way, uh, it looks this, the uh, scrambler works well with spacings in it too. So you're welcome to put spacings in here. But anyway, this true stands for uh, unique. And what that does is it handles all that other stuff for you. It will assume that if you're, it will assume first of all that you're passing in an array. So it's just going to make a tile from that array and it's going to do them in order. So that means you don't have to remember to use a series. Okay, if, if we were using the ZimV value, you'd have to use a series because if you passed in an array with a ZimV value, it would randomly pick from the array and that wouldn't give you what you want. So if you use the true here and you pass in an array, it will do that array in order as most people would imagine would happen. Not only that, but if you pass in true here, it does not clone them. So that means if you make events or do whatever you want to do up here and pass in the array of these things, all of that will be the original objects. And all that's done with this little true right here. So that irons out those problems, the couple problems on that. I mean, they weren't problems per se. They were just maybe unexpected <laughs> issues. <laughs> Uh, very powerful, very flexible, but still unexpected. <laughs> so hopefully this will help um, people tile unique elements. Yay! And you can still do it the other way, just don't put this to true. And you can still you know, pass in a series or an array and pick randomly from it, which is also very handy, but for a different situation. So great, we've tiled our images. Now, if we didn't throw it into the scrambler and we added this tile to the stage, you would basically see the, the, the solution would be, or the, the puzzle would be solved. You'd be sitting there with a tile of all of the little images in the right order. But we take this tile and we pass it into a scrambler. So here's our new scrambler. And we pass the tile in and we center it. And that works. And if the scrambler is complete, here's what we're doing when the scrambler is complete. First of all, we're centering the image. So we're putting the image on the stage. This is the original image, not the non cut up one right there, that one. These guys are all the sort of cut up ones. So we put the original image on the stage. We center reg it so that when we animate its rotation, it rotates around the middle. And when we're done, we put something on the bottom. Oh, we put the image on the bottom and let you drag it. Uh, you know, these things are extras. We also removed the picture and the picture is the scrambler right here. So here's the scrambler. When it's done, when we're complete, we're going to put the real picture there and animate it, spin it, and we're gonna remove the old picture. Probably don't need to stage.update because this animation will update the stage for us. But if we didn't, uh, let's leave it in there. This is, you know, possibly for you guys in the future. Maybe you don't want to spin yours. Maybe there won't be any animation. And if all you did was that, boop, like so. If you said, hey, when this is complete, put the real picture there. The reason you do that is, watch, I'll show you what it looks like without, uh, without doing this. And let's open this up. Although I've got some Thai food coming, so I don't want to be too long here. Hopefully it doesn't take me long to scramble this thing. Mm, oops, or unscramble it. So how are we doing? This guy has to go over there. This one, are you ready? There you go. So it's not too bad, but look, there's a line. You see this line right here? And there's a line right there. And I don't know if the lines will change as, we, yeah, there we go. So as we scale this thing, uh, Canvas tries its best to put things right next to one another, but uh, doesn't quite always happen. As you can see, we've got some thin threads there. So what we did is we made it so that uh, we added the real image over top and removed this one. 
and now we also added an animation on that real image. But anyway, that, that's it, huh? Neat. And oopsie daisies, we don't want to bring the 30 back, and we want to keep the animation in there. So that's, uh, so isn't it neat? Like, I mean, it looks like when we're complete, we're doing a lot of stuff in Zim, but not really. This is the same old animate changed on, chained onto a center reg. And we've seen this a hundred times in Zim. Um, we're making this uh, draggable in the end. And we put on the bot, the reason why we put it on the bot, if we didn't put it on the bot, uh, huh, gotta solve this one more time. Well, I don't have to solve it. If we didn't put it on the bot, when we dragged it, it would come up over top of everything. So it would be on top of the header. It would be on top of the scrambler. It would be on top of the icon as we dragged the final picture around. So we just threw it to the bot, and then when we drag it, that's what this on top is, false is. First of all, oh, this is new to ZimCat as well. I'm glad I spotted this. And that is, um, this is bubbling. Yay, bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. We can set a, a display object as a boundary now. So if we set the boundary of the drag to the stage, this is rather than saying zero, oh, new boundary, new boundary. 0 comma 0 comma stage width comma stage <laughs> I, I've typed those before so that would uh, make a boundary of that but let's see that would break wouldn't it it'd be great this if it's center regged half of the half of the picture would end up going off to the left going up above going down below so we'd have to subtract um, the width of the picture which is what uh, image we've got an image here yeah we already made the image so that would be minus half image dot uh, width divided by two minus half image width divided uh height divided by two minus the image width no divided by twos there because this is the overall width we we still have to subtract the whole width of the image because half of it on the left half. anyway blah 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 right that's tricky all this stuff is tricky, but now you can say stage. And what it does is it will calculate that for you. And if you wanted to, you could make your own custom rectangle and you could pass in the custom rectangle and it would drag only within that custom rectangle. So, uh, hey, that's very handy, yay. We had already done that with gesture. We, we went and, and did the calculations for gesture. That's a lot of calculations actually to do. That's really complicated stuff to make it work all the time. I mean, it's an hour's worth of, of code and, and that's what we've done. We spent an hour sort of really trying to work out how would we drag within a boundary, maybe two hours by the time we debugged it, maybe three hours by the time we debugged it. But the, those are now three hours, well, it wouldn't take you three hours. That that saves you guys. Every time you do that, probably saves you five, ten minutes. You know, so you don't have to calculate that stuff on the boundary. Nice, huh? And those five and ten minutes add up. And so hopefully we're, you know, it's an environmental thing, right? Now you don't have to waste your time and energy. You had to be fed. You had to. You have to live somewhere. <laughs> you don't have to be wasting that time. So, yay. Yay, code. And that's how code is, right? You code things once so other people can use them more. Those are things like classes and, and libraries, and frameworks. Oh, my. All right. What the heck were we doing here? I don't know. And the on top false. So that last one was the on top false there. I think we are just coming back to what we had. <laughs> To the 30 again. It really, really wants me to undo and make, make 30 rows or columns, doesn't it? Uh, so here we were. The boundary is new. On top has been around for a while. Why did we set it to on top false? Usually the thing we drag, we want to come up to the top. In this case, we already just put it to the bottom. <laughs> Stay in the bottom. And if we didn't put the on top false, it would just pop right back up to the top of the container, which is the stage. And it would be back on top of all this other stuff. So if we say on top false when we're dragging, that means it will not pop up to the top of everything else when we drag that final picture. Uh, nothing to do with these drags, by the way. Uh, note the little shadow, if you like that. Ooh, so as you pick that up, it, it makes a little shadow there for you so that uh, now you probably don't need borders to be able to distinguish this. Sometimes when you pick up a green thing like this, if you didn't have a border, 
you almost can't tell what's what, but now, uh, now you can. Nice, huh? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the scrambler. We also used, I don't know if you saw this, whoa, there's a, another example of the scrambler, and lots of scramblers. Uh, in this thing right here, if, if this is the, the main Zim site now, if I go to the other side, uh, you, you, uh, by the way, if, you, if you're over here on this side, or any side, and you hit the cat, that takes you back to the, the main front menu there. And if we pop on over here, here's a scrambler. Isn't that nice? We're, we're trying to match what, what these are. So we've got scramblers here. Uh, this is not a scrambler. This is just, we're trying to answer. That's a list. This is a scrambler. So we want a new circle dot drag. So there it is. You hit it, new circle dot drag. And it knows, test, correct. It knew that I had the right order. If I have the wrong order, oops, wrong order. Uh, no scrambler here, no scrambler here, uh, no scrambler here, that's a selector, no scrambler here, uh, maybe that's it for the scramblers. Yeah, this is a selector as well. So this is Dr. Abstract, and it has been a, a what's a bubbling at Zim? Uh, have a, a great day or night, and that scrambler has been really, really handy, especially for e-learning apps. You know, making allowing kids to match things up and do simple puzzles. I love it. Uh, along those lines, perhaps we'll do a bubbling in the near future about our e-learning app, our sample e-learning app that we've made that incorporates many of these things. But that will be in the future. Uh, come on back and check out some of the other bubblings as well. Join us at Zim, zimjs.com, and hang out with us, zimjs.com slash slack. Love to see you there. Uh, you're certainly welcome. Come on in. Free, fun, join, start coding, keep on coding. <laughs> keep on coding. Be creative. Ciao.